He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He's all. Yeah. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> well, I'm going to be in the book of Joel this morning. The book of Joel. It's one of the minor prophets. Joel chapter 1. And I'm just going to say a prayer before I uh, read the word of God. Oh, Father, I just want to thank you. Uh, for today, I thank you for your many blessings. I thank you for each and every person here today. And uh, God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we uh, open up your, your word, I pray that you uh, just have your way in our hearts and in our minds. And God, I pray that you be glorified um, in everything that I say and do right now. And uh, Jesus, we need you. We need you more than ever. I need your help. We all need your help. And we could do nothing without you, Jesus. And I ask you these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, before I read the verse that I want to uh, read in the first chapter of Joel... In the, in the beginning of Joel, in this whole chapter, it, it talks about a pestilence that came at that time with Joel. You know, there was a, a pestilence, a plague, and it was a bunch of grasshoppers. Locust. And these locusts, when you read about the whole thing, I mean, it, it just destroyed everything. It destroyed everything that was green, everything that was good, um, to a point it affected everybody's livelihood. And... And then after he talks about all of that, you know, and that was a horrible thing that happened. And everybody got affected when these locusts came and destroyed all the crops. And there was nothing they could do about it. And then in verse 13 it says, Gird yourselves with sackcloth and lament, O priest. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Come and spend the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God, for the grain offering and the libation are withheld from the house of your God. Consecrate a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land to the house of the Lord your God. And, and you know, there's a time, you know, there's a call here for fasting and prayer. Now, there's, a, there's times in our life that we need to be doing that in our personal life. And then there's times that we should be doing it corporately. And, and this is one of those corporate calls by the leader, the spiritual leader, and said, you know what? We're in a plague right now. The locusts have destroyed everything. And, and it's time for us to set ourselves apart and proclaim a solemn assembly. That means everybody. Gather the elders and all the people of the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to him. You know, there's a time, you know, uh, 
in our personal life, like I said, you know, to fast and pray. But then there's times corporately that we need to do that in the Bible. And um, it's usually like an emergency fast. 9-1-1. And, you know, in our times, and I, I wrote, I'm going to read what I wrote here. In our times that we're living in now, nations of the world are experiencing severe droughts, famines, frightening epidemics, unexpected earthquakes, devastating floods, and other natural disasters which affect the national and global economy. Would you say we're in a place like that? You know, I, I was just looking uh, at some news feed this morning, and I was looking at California. Those fires are out of control over there. And the video that I saw, there was even a tornado in the middle of that fire. Could you imagine a tornado of fire? And a tornado don't stand still. It moves. Now, that's pretty serious, right? You know, and, you know, few people ask, you know, Few people, when we see all these things going on around us, few of us ask, uh, what, what is God trying to tell us? <laughs> right? But then again, you get a lot of voices out there. And you have the optimist. They end up saying the crisis is not going to last. Be brave. The pessimist. It's going to get worse. And there's no escape. Then you get the alarmist. The enemy is behind every tree. Right? You got all these voices out there. You got scoffers. They brush it off. What difference does it make? Anyway. But then, Joel wasn't that person. He was a realist. When he called all them to prayer, he was a realist in this situation. And he, he really, what he was doing is he looked at life through the lens of the Word of God. Now, that's a big difference, right? You know, Second Chronicles 7.14 tells us, right? Uh, when I look at that, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, I just want to read. You know, God said something when Do Solomon dedicated the temple. And there were a bunch of things, you know. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why we should fast and pray. And, and I, I just want to start with 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11. I'm going to start right there. And it says... Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord in the king's palace and successfully completed all he had planned on doing in the house of the Lord in his palace. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, now this is the words of God to Solomon, I have heard your prayer. I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Then he says this. This is what the Lord says. If I shut up the heavens. That there is no rain. If I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. And my people who are called by my name. Shall humble themselves. And pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, God gave us, He says, You know, if these things happen, and, and it's like human nature, for it really is, it's the sinful nature in us for us to 
fall away from the things of God. It's only natural for that. E even as believers, it's easy to slip away or backslide or do whatever, okay? It it's part of our sinful nature when that happens. But there are times, okay, God says, when I send these things your way to get your attention, okay, you know, you know, like Joel being a realist in this situation, looking at life through the lens of the word of God, okay? And I'll bet you, I wonder if he was even thinking about 2 Chronicles 7.14 when he said that. Call a holy fast. God said when this happens, we need to call a holy fast. And call everybody in. The men, the children, everybody. And, and you know what? And humble ourselves. And that word humble in uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14, those that are called by my name humble themselves. Fasting is a form of humbling ourselves. That's a part of it. It's not fun to fast, is it? Our flesh don't like it very much. I know that. But you know, humble ourselves and pray. See, you can't just humble yourselves and not pray. You got to pray and humble yourself. They go together. And, and then it says, and seek my face. Not seek, not seek a... Uh, uh, the next elected officer in our country, not seek the stock market, not seek our military, not seek whoever we think we need to seek to fix our problems. We need to seek God's face. We need to seek the Lord. That's a big difference, right? And then it says, and a turn from their wicked ways. See, and that's the whole thing. All these things that happen are to get our attention to bring us back to God. You know, when, when, we, we, when things aren't going the way they should be and the blessings are stopping and all of those kinds of things, it's God's way of trying to get our attention. Because God's in the blessing business. He always is in the blessing business. But he loves us so much that he'll allow certain things to happen to get our attention. Because it's his desire that not one will be lost, but all be saved. Now, it's also God's heart's desire to bring a revival in the land. I believe that. An awakening, a revival. Could you imagine if the whole world was on fire for Jesus? Could you imagine if true repentance would take place all over the globe? Could you imagine the how God, you know, how God can show up and change everything? Could you imagine and I believe he wants to bless like that. But the whole key is, if this happens, this is what you need to do. And, and if you turn from your wicked ways, you humble yourself, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. God's going to hear us. And he's going to forgive their sin and heal their land. Now that's pretty powerful, right? Now, Joel understood that. And that's why he called for a sacred assembly. In that time, the locust came. And, and if you keep going in Joel, it talks about how, you know, and they quote out of that in the book of Acts, okay? They, they met in the upper room for 10 days, right? They were fasting and praying. They were seeking the Lord, right? What happened? The, the Holy Spirit fell. And the church was born. And it all happened at a prayer meeting. It all happened when people were fasting and praying and seeking the Lord with all their hearts. And the next thing you know, the Holy Ghost came 
in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit, he came. So there's a biblical principle here. And, and why I'm saying all of that, why? Well, I want to I want to share a couple examples of when that happened in the Bible. Now there was a time in 2nd uh, 2nd Chronicles 7 I mean 2nd uh, Chronicles again chapter 20 and I know I shared a little bit about it in our uh, Bible study, and I, I probably touched on it a little bit last week. But when King Jehoshaphat, in chapter 20, okay, he was surrounded by an army, a large army. It says the army was so big that the field was just full of fighting men coming their way. And he was outnumbered. And the Holy Spirit put on his heart to call a holy fast. Just like this. You know, because that's one of the prerequisites. If the enemy is coming and you're feeling overwhelmed, God is trying to get your attention again. Humble yourself. Seek his face. Humble yourself. And that's what they did. They humbled themselves. They seek the Lord's face. Sought the Lord's face. Look at verse... Uh, this is Second Chronicles 20, verse 3. Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. And Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord, and they came from all cities of Judah to seek the Lord. You know, and, and, it meant, and it even mentions, if you keep reading, that even the children were involved. Everybody in Judah got involved. This was like an emergency time to have fasting and prayer. And you know what? When they did that, as in the middle of that prayer meeting, a prophet of God showed up and gave Jehoshaphat his instructions on how to go to war. And you know what it was? Send out the singers first. The singers are going to go out ahead of you in battle. And none of your fighting men are going to have to lay a finger on the enemy. You imagine hearing that after a prayer meeting while you're fasting and praying, a prophet of God comes. You might probably say, hey, you know, that guy's a little crazy. What do you mean? Just go out and praise. But they obeyed the Lord. They heard from the Lord. They took in faith. They believed the Lord's battle plan. And they went with the singers. And it's exactly what happened. All the enemy turned on each other. And they didn't have to lift a finger. And it all happened by fasting and prayer. See, God can change our circumstances. God can change the circumstances that we see in our land right now. It's not going to be people that's going to fix this. It's the Lord. And we got to do it the Lord's way. If any time now, you know, and it says in the book of Joel, and I didn't get to that place, but I'll just read it. It says a little bit later, it says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble. And you know what? In the Old Testament, they used to blow the shofar. And when they blew the shofar, okay, the shofar was a sign of, okay, we need to pay attention right now. This, you know, and they blow that thing. And I remember when we were in Israel, when I went there uh, last fall, there was somebody blowing a shofar everywhere up on this mountaintop. 
And, and I'll tell you, there was a lot of people there, and when that person blew the shofar, everybody paid attention. And God is blowing the shofar right now. I really believe that. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. But when I get, so we see what Jehoshaphat, and now I want to talk about a, a, a little bit in history now. There was another time in history this happened. Not in the Bible days. This isn't just Bible stories. You remember Abraham Lincoln? He was president of the United States when the Civil War began. Now, Civil War was pretty bad. Division was pretty great. And it was all over slavery. Men were fighting men. Brothers were fighting brothers. They were killing each other in the battlefield. It was a horrible war. That was a war that killed more people than ever. There was a lot of dead everywhere. And, and you know what Abraham Lincoln did? And I'm going to give you some dates. I'm going to give you a little history lesson. March 30th, 1863. He issued a proclamation. He declared April 30, 30th, 1863, to be a day of national fasting and prayer. Based on 2 Chronicles 7.14. Did you know that? It was April 30th, 1863. It was his second proclamation. He did three proclamations. It was the second one. Now, at that time, okay, the Confederate Army, for the two years of the Civil War, the Confederate Army was really winning and the North was really losing, and the North did not win any battles yet. Robert E. Lee was just about ready to finish off the Union Army at this time. The Union Army weren't winning any battles at all. And then he called this fast. And you notice he called the fast, and it took a month See, he, he, he called the fast April 30th, and then it was at the end of April. Well, he called the fast in March, March 30th, to have a fast April 30th. Now, when you see when people call a time of fasting, there's always a time of preparation first. It takes time to gather people together. And pray and to free up their schedules and get themselves prepared to do something like that. And th this is what happened 30 days later. And in that proclamation, and I won't read the whole thing, but it says in the proclamation, Now therefore, in compliance with requests and fully concurring the views of the Senate, I do by this proclamation... Designate to set apart Thursday, the 30th of April, 1863, as a day of national humiliation, fasting, and prayer. And I do hereby request all the people to abstain on that day from their ordinary secular pursuits and unite at their s several places of public worship and their respective homes in keeping the day holy to the Lord, devoted to the humble discharge of the religious duties proper to that solemn occasion. That's what he wrote. That's part of the proclamation. And you know what led him to that? He realized that it was the sin of slavery that's causing all these men to die in battle. They, two year, 200 years before the Civil War, 200 years, okay, slavery was happening in this land. And there was a lot of people that were getting whipped and they were mistreated and all of those kinds of things. And the sin was crying out, okay? And then came the Civil War. 
And Abraham Lincoln realized, he realized that what we're going through right now is fruit of the sin that we committed. It's fruit of this. And, and he came to realize we need to pray and have a day of fasting. So they had that day of fasting. You know what happened? Two days later, two days after that fast, the war started turning around. Robert E. Lee's right-hand general was out on a, he was out after a big victory. That night he was on recon and he got killed by somebody from his own army. His right-hand general that he leaned on for everything, he got killed. That was May 2nd. He got, sh he got shot and he died May 10th, 1863. And, and that battle, that day, Robert E. Lee got really confident and he wanted to really finish the job because he won that battle. He ended up, I'm going to go as far as to Washington right away, okay? So he got arrogant and cocky out of that battle. And in July of 1863 came Gettysburg. A few months later, and if you look at history books, that's the whole turn of the war. The Confederates were no longer on offense. They were on defense. And on that same time at Gettysburg, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, he conquered a town in Mississippi that separated the Confederate army. And now they were no longer united. They were divided. And it was just a matter of time for the Union Army to finish off the war. But it all started by fasting and prayer. When, when Abraham Lincoln decided, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, and we're going to pray for our nation, and we're going to repent of the sin of slavery. And he called everybody to a time of fasting. So I gave a biblical example, and I also gave a historical example of when 2 Chronicles 7.14 is applied, how God can change a nation. He could change things. He could change circumstances. I'm kind of glad the Union Army won. I would imagine what we would be like if we, they would have lost how America would be right now, right? But anyway, I want to get to why I'm talking about all this. Well, I'm talking about this because there's a call for fasting and praying now. And, and it's not just one group of people doing this. That's the part that got my attention. There's a call of fasting and prayer in Washington, D.C. It's September 26th, 2020. And we're praying for our nation. And these are spiritual leaders that are rising up to do this. And uh, Pat Robinson's one of them. Jonathan Kahn, I don't know if you ever heard of him. He's one of them. And uh, Franklin Graham is another one. And, and they're going to be dedicating that day to fasting and prayer right in Washington, D.C., in the mall area, right in front of the Washington Monument. Now, what got my attention about that, okay, is what Franklin Graham is doing is separate than what Jonathan Kahn and um, Pat Robinson and all of them uh, is doing it's a separate event and they're both feeling like fasting and praying in the Washington Mall area now that's who else but God would want to put that on people's hearts to want to pray look what we're facing we're facing a pandemic 
We're facing a country that's so divided. We got fires going on. We got all kinds of stuff happening, right? And, and anxiety in people's lives is like going through the roof right now. And they don't know how to handle it. And, and I believe it's God's way of saying, hello. It's not going to be our next president that's going to fix this. And I don't care what party it is. It's not going to be uh, a Democrat or a Republican that's going to fix this. It's not going to be e even the way uh, law enforcement is being treated, right? And, and there's a lot of sins to repent of that our nation has really uh, committed. One of them is late-term abortion laws. And I could go on about the sanctity of marriage between man and a woman. Those are all laws now that got broken. God's laws. And, and we could go on. You know how many abortions? You, there's over, uh, I, it was 6 million babies that have died. That's a lot. We gotta let that sink in for a minute. That's a lot of babies. God cares about them. He created them. He loves them. And I know some people that have stories that didn't get an abortion and their children are alive and well, and it's a testimony for them, right? But God cares about all that. He cares about these laws that are being changed in our land. How good is being called evil and evil is called, being called good. We just can't go on with life and feel like we're going to be all set. God's trying to get our attention. And he's put it on people's hearts to want to call for a time of fasting and prayer. And, and you know what? I'm excited about that. Because I, I want our church to be involved in that. And I looked up uh, the return.org. If you're taking notes, write that down. Look up at their website. Jonathan Kahn's on there. Uh, uh, it, and it's not just preachers either. You know the My Pillow guy? He's involved in that. I love my pillow. <laughs> right, Pauline? You know Martin Luther King? His daughter, she's going to be there. And she's going to be leading some of that prayer that day. I'm sure when she leads in prayer, she's going to be repenting of the sins of injustices. Right? Right? But see, rather than to burn the place down or get mad at each other and all of these things, why not give all of that stuff to God? And really, there's a lot of repentance that needs to happen. Even like hatred is a sin. Treating each other without respect is a sin. We, we can't like ignore that. There are things that we have to repent of. The way we treat our leaders, the way we treat our police, the way we treat our children, the way we treat our families. There's a lot of injustices that are happening in our land. And how can God send his blessing? And his blessing is about ready to leave. And I feel like it's time to sound the alarm. I want our nation to be blessed. I want to see a revival. How about you? Yes. Hallelujah. Now, and I know I'm, on, I'm, I'm uh, live because I, I got to kind of speed it up. But this is Franklin Graham's agenda, okay? You know what he's going to do? 
It's a prayer walk march. And he's asking people to bring buses and all kinds of stuff. He, he's, and he did this at the last time there was an election cycle. And he went to all the Capitol buildings. And this time here, he's going to do it in Washington. He's going to have a prayer march. He's asking all the churches to come. And they're going to do a prayer walk. And they, they're going to do a prayer walk. And they're going to do a prayer walk on that day, the 26th. They're going to do it a prayer walk. The Lincoln Memorial, they're going to pray. Then at the World War II Memorial, they're going to pray. They're going to stop at the Washington Monument. And this is all with the humbling themselves, turn from their wicked way, all of this, repenting of things, okay? And the Washington Monument, National Museum of African American History Building, National Archives, which has to do with us having religious freedoms here in this world, I mean in this country. He, they're going to pray at the U.S. Capitol. Boy, if anybody needs prayer, right? And they're also going to be praying in front of the White House. That group of people. And then the other group is what we're going to be involved with. Our church, we're going to be hosting this. What's going to happen, we're going to be involved on September 26th, and we're going to be simulcasting what they're doing in Washington, D.C., right here. Live on the Internet. So what they're doing down there, we're going to be seeing right on this screen right here. And I'm going to have it on all day. It's an all-day event. And, it's going to, and the schedule is on the wall in case you guys want to know about it, what they're going to be doing. And they have, I don't know, there's something like 15 different people that are going to step up and pray. Jonathan Kahn's one of them. Pat Robinson's another one. Mar Martin Luther King's daughter's going to be another one. And I don't know who else is going to be praying, but this is going to be quite an event here. I'm pretty excited about this. Do you know how many churches? Because we can't all drive to Washington, D.C. But the church can pray, right? And we can fast and pray. Fast and pray. Humble ourselves and pray. Okay, Fast and pray. And it will be a time of fasting and prayer. Somebody blew the horn. And I feel like I'm responding to that call. And, and I want our church to be a part of that. We're going to host it. We're going to be on. It's going to be on from 9 o'clock until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. The whole event is going to be broadcast here. And I'm going to be here the whole time praying with whatever they're doing in Washington. And I hope you guys want to come out. Maybe not all day, whenever, throughout the day, whatever it is, okay? If you want to be all day, that's good. I'm going to be here all day. I know that. And, and we're going to be praying for our nation. A time of repentance. Because I believe if God can change things for Abraham Lincoln, he can change things for us. He could change things for us. And boy, do we need change, don't we? We need a move of God. We need a move of God. And you know what? In that group, and there's going to be a lot of people there, you know where they're going to be? This is a different group than Franklin Graham. Right by the Washington Monument. <laughs> In the mall area. And it's going to be a large gathering, because I've been looking on the internet, the, the website. And you know how many churches are hosting that can't make it? You want to know? I'd say there's about 1,500. That's what I would say. You say 1,000. I say 1,500. Churches all over the country. There's some in Africa. There's some, there's some all different parts of the world, not just America. 
And there's going to be churches that are going to be live feeding like what we're going to do. Now, this is a big event. Could you imagine what God can do? And I'm believing. And the whole thing, and I've been working really hard, okay, to prepare for this already. And uh, I know I've got to close this off, but I've been working really hard to a point, okay, if any of you have any questions about fasting, I took time on Friday night all by myself over here to give a teaching. I, I recorded it, and I put it on the YouTube channel. So if you want to learn about fasting and what fasting means and what type of fast and all of that, okay, you could go on that YouTube channel. And uh, Pauline gave you the thing. It's in the bulletin on how to get there. I also put it on the Facebook page, that YouTube video. It's, uh, and also on my personal wall, it's on there too. So if you want to learn about fasting, and if God's calling you to fast, what you should do to fast in this. Like for me, now Jonathan Kahn's a rabbi. He's a Jewish guy. And, and he's calling this fast from September 18th all the way to September uh, 27th. The 26th is the climax of it. And you know why? The 18th is the Feast of Trumpets for the Jewish people. And the 27th is the Day of Atonement, which is the holiest day for the Jewish people. And, and the Feast of Trumpets, blowing it, it's a time for the Jewish people when they start a new year. It's time for them to do some introspection and checking their lives out because they believe in blessings and cursings. And, when, and it climax up to the Day of Atonement. And on the Day of Atonement, that's when the priests, you remember, used to have to put a little rope on his leg with bells and stuff. Well, the whole thing was, is God going to honor that sacrifice or is he not? Is God going to honor this time of repentance and bless us and give us a scapegoat to send into the wilderness? Or is the repentance really going to be genuine? Or is it just going to be, you know? Hopefully it's going to be genuine for the, all of us to be repenting and looking for blessing. And I believe that God could send a revival in the middle of this. I really believe it. I hope you want to be a part of that. And I know it's... A little long and we're still going live and I still want to do it on purpose in case anyone's hearing it and they want to get involved okay I got some devotionals I'm going to give you guys like for me I'm going on vacation I'm leaving tomorrow I'm not going on vacation with God okay and on the 18th when the feast of trumpets happens I'm going to start getting myself prepared for the 26th and I'm going to get myself in the mode of fasting and prayer. Okay? And I got a devotion here. And between the 18th and the 26th, there's five days here. Okay? And uh, the topics are repentance, reconciliation, restoration, revival. And the last topic is reformation. And I want to pass one out to every family here, at least one per family. And if there's more, you can have them. And if you want to be a part of this with me and get yourself prepared and, and come really prepared for the 26th, because that's going to be a day I'm going to be fasting. I'm going to be fasting that day. Like a lot of other people in our country are doing. And uh, because I believe if we really take this call seriously, God can change things. 
and I look, I got a schedule up there of what's going to happen on the podcast all day. I mean, what we're going to see on the 26th. And uh, I hope you all want to be a part somehow, some way. Okay? I can't make anybody do anything. And God wouldn't want you to anyway, because that's just going through a form and denying the power. But if you really want to, and you're hearing the call right now, I want to encourage you to come out and encourage others to come too. You know, we're hosting in this area. I'm hoping other people that will come in to want to pray with us, okay? All right. Now I'm going to close in a word of prayer. But before I do, I'm going to ask Sue, you want to come up here? You want to pass these devotionals out for me? And I'm going to pray. So mark the calendar, the 18th to the 26th. And while she's doing that, before I pray, you want to play that video? And we're going to end with that, and then I'm going to pray, okay? Yeah, good. This is Jonathan Kahn. We are standing at a critical moment in American and world history, a moment that can seal the future for calamity or redemption. We've driven God out of our culture and we war against his ways. If we don't return to God, America's light will go out. The answer is revival, but we only have a limited window of time. So this is the announcing of the return, the national and global day of prayer and repentance, Saturday, September 26, 2020, 40 days from the election and on the 400th anniversary of the sailing of the Mayflower at America's dedication to God. Join me for a pivotal, sacred and prophetic gathering on the National Mall, Washington, D.C. If you can't make it there, the return will be all over America. Gather in your states, your churches, your homes to pray for repentance, return, revival and rest restoration on the promise if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways i will hear from heaven i'll forgive their sin and i will heal their land the return is for all of god's people every denomination and on board is everybody from pat robertson to dr dobson from billy graham's daughter and graham lots to martin luther king's niece alveda king and many many more surrounding the day of the return will be the 10 ancient days of prayer and repentance beginning with the feast of trumpets to yom kippur september 18th to september 20th to intensify our prayers and intercession for revival. And if you're outside America, join us on that day in your nation to pray not only for America, but for your nation and bring the return to your land. The return, September 26, 2020. Plan for it now. Spread the word in this video and go to the returnwebsite.org. That's the returnwebsite.org. The return begins now as you, me, and all of God's people not only pray for revival, but begin living in revival. It is time to seek the Lord. It's time to return. The trumpet has been blown. Father, I just want to thank you for today. God, just have mercy on our nation. And all these people that are struggling through calamities right now, and there's so many, it's overwhelming, oh God. And Lord, you've got our attention. And Father, we just, uh, I pray God that you just uh, turn our nation around. And Lord, I, I'm believing for a revival to be birthed out of this time of fasting and praying when all these Christians and all these people, Father, coming together and, and uh, wanting to pray on behalf of our nation in repentance. God, you said you'd heal our land. And we're looking for that healing. We're looking for that time of revival. We're looking for people to get saved. We're looking for people to come to a place 
of salvation and filled with God. Lord, I'm looking for places to get shut down that's ungodly, oh God, that the laws can get changed. God, that line up with your laws. Father, I'm praying in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you move in the land, you move in this world, and I pray that more people will want to take part in September 26th, oh God. If they can't make it to Washington, they want to take part. They want to host something. Whether it's in a, even a block, you know, a, a little uh, party at home, a watch party, whatever it might be, Father. God, I pray that people will participate in this. And, and God, we know that our prayers are like, go, go before you as a, in the bowl as incense before your holy throne. And God, I pray that those prayers will just be a, a sweet aroma to you, oh God. And Father God, as we leave here today, show us what we got to do to prepare ourselves, oh God. And I just ask you all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to God.